Hello, hello, hello. I'm getting very, very slick at these vlogs, as I believe the youth call them. Even got a little microphone sticking up my jumper. Can't say more professional than that. And on top of that, I've even got notes. Today I want to answer a question that people often ask me, and it surprises me that they ask it. How do I plan my next adventure? Perhaps this is just because I've always loved the idea of adventures long before I was even doing any of them. And so planning adventures, coming up with ideas for trips has never been a problem with me. In fact, I've got way more ideas for trips than I'll ever be able to do in, in my whole life. Um, I've got a wall here covered in maps. I've got the whole roof of my shed is a big map of the world. I've got a globe just down there and I've got an atlas on my bookshelf. Plans aren't really a problem for me. But I was interested to hear and to learn that some people do find it a bit tricky just to try and decide what they might want to do. And I do appreciate that there is just a myriad options, so many things that you could do. The first thing if you're trying to plan an adventure is to block off a chunk of time. Even if you have no idea what you're going to do in that time, even if you have no cash, no clue, nothing at all, block off the time. Put a date in your diary, make these sacred. These are non-negotiable dates when you are going to go and do your adventure. Work might come up in that time. You can always get more money. You can never get more time. Social engagement might come up in that time. You have to then decide, am I going to go do this massive adventure or am I going to keep everyone else happy? You have to make some pretty harsh and at times selfish choices. Block off the time in your diary. Second thing, two fingers. Second thing, start saving today. I've talked before about how to save up money for your adventure. The quicker, the sooner you start saving and the sooner you start economizing on your life, the more money you'll have available for your trip. Once I've done that, that's when I get to the fun bit. I sit down and I start daydreaming. I look at my bookshelves, I read books. I've written lots of blog posts on my website, by the way, with ideas for books to read. There's one called Adventure Reading 101, which is compulsory adventure reading. If you read all the books on that list, your mind will start to churn with some sort of ideas. Read books. I like looking at globes. The reason I decided to cross Iceland by foot and pack cross was because on a, on a map, Iceland was this lovely circular shape that just seemed so succinctly perfect for crossing from one side to the other. So that came about purely just from idly looking at maps and starting to think, oh, I wonder if you could go from there to there. And I wonder if you went over those mountains, if that would make it more exciting. So spend time just flipping through maps. Also have a think about which other adventures have excited you. I assume you're not coming to this topic completely cold. You must have had some sort of ideas or something that set the spark going for making you want to do adventures. Which trips were they? Who did them? Why did they excite you? Try and work out what aspect of the trip it is. You don't need to go copy the trip, but try, just perhaps you want to emulate the spirit of the trip. The internet, of course, is awash with websites. It's also a haven for procrastination and people talking a good game and not actually doing anything with their lives. So beware of that. But blogs, Websites like uh, Sidetracked, who also make a beautiful magazine. If you read these, look at these pictures, you will start to get ideas, start drooling with imagination. The next thing I start trying to do is I start trying to think about what sort of journey do I want to do. And it's important when I'm choosing a trip that it's novel, fresh, different and difficult for me. I personally don't care about world records and world firsts. I never have but it's about what feels fresh and novel and exciting to me. If you're interested in the world first, then that will, that will skew how you think about things, which is fine, but that's not the way I do it. So I think about these fresh ideas. I end up trying to come up with some sort of shortlist. You can usually start to narrow down a shortlist according to how much time you have available, how much time the trip will take whether you can do it solo or with a partner and whether you have that partner who would come with you. The cost of the trip um, has a huge impact on my decision as to which one I do next and also the season, what time of year it is. You can find a warm sunny day any day in the world but you can't find it everywhere. 
every day. And so you have to choose which season you're going to go and which season you want to travel. That will narrow things down a lot. It's really hard if you just had a blank piece of paper and a world atlas to just choose a trip. And so you have to start narrowing things down. You can't go everywhere at once. You can't do everything at once. You can do anything you want, but you can't do everything. So first of all, start thinking about which continent do you want to go to and why? Which continents don't you want to go to and why? How do you want to travel? Do you want to be on foot, on bicycle, on camel? Do you want to be climbing mountains, skiing to the poles? Or do you want to be traveling by train and bus or in your own car? So the style of transport, think about that. So now you've already thought about where you want to go, the style of transport and what season you want to go in, how long you're going to go for, the budget. You need to consider the hardness. Do you want to enjoy this or do you want to suffer? <laughs> the two don't tend to go hand in hand, it's personal preference. Have you found out who you're going to go with? Have you chosen your partner and have you spoken to him or her about what sort of thing you might like to do? And by now then you should be, if you've answered all those questions quite thoughtfully, you will really have narrowed things down to a pretty specific couple of projects. That's my phone, should have turned it off. No one ever texts me, I have no friends and that was someone. Um, Next question to ask is, what is success for you? What will count as success on this journey? And what will count as failure? And if you spend quite a bit of time really thinking hard about those, it'll really help you firm up a little bit more what you want to get out of this trip. What's the point of it? Why are you doing it? And then another small thing to think about is what do you want to do with the trip afterwards? Are you just doing the trip for its own sake? The very best reason of all. Or are you doing it in order to try to make a book or write a film or produce um, a portfolio of photography? What do you want to do with the trip afterwards? And all these things will really help you focus in on the sort of trip you want to do. So by now I'm getting closer to thinking about the idea I want to do. I've almost got a short list here. And then to try and pick the one from that, I try to ask myself, why do I want to do this trip? What is it I'm after at the moment? Is it just an escape from boring life? Is it that I want to go to somewhere I've never been? Do I want to push myself really hard, challenge myself? Why do I want to do this? And what do I want the outcome of the trip to be? Do I want the trip to get me world famous and super rich? Unlikely. Do I want to just feel a warm glow of accomplishment and not feel the need to go do any more trips for a while? Do I want to write a book? Do I want to do the trip in order to build my CV? Is this expedition a stepping stone towards doing stuff bigger and more difficult, serving an apprenticeship? The trip I did in Greenland was wonderful in its own right, but that was very much designed to build my skills for a bigger, more difficult project. And then in terms of what makes a good adventure, does it have a story? Does it have... Does it have a story? Does it have a way that people can instantly relate to? Can you explain your trip to some idiot who's not an expert on adventures in 30 seconds? And if you can, you start to have a good adventure. So for example, I want to cycle around the world. I want to walk around the M25. I want to row across the Atlantic. These are good, succinct stories. Compare that with, I want to cross Iceland from the north coast to the south coast on foot, walking when I can and when I can't, getting into a pack raft. A pack raft, oh, you don't know what a pack raft is? Okay, let me explain that. A pack raft is a small little inflatable boat and I'll paddle all the way down to the sea. My I uh, Ah. That was uh, my agent offering me a million pounds for my very professional vlogs. The Iceland trip was a cool trip. I loved it. But I've, what I've noticed is when I do talks about it, no one cares. You can see the audience glazing over. And that's because it's not succinct. It's not a simple thing to explain like the other ones that I just mentioned. So you want a trip that's really simple and succinct to, to be able to convey to other people. And if you have that, you start to have a story. So by now then you should have your idea, you should have some sort of 
inclination of when you're gonna go, no, a definite plan of when you're gonna go. You should be saving up your cash. What do I do next? Next, I tend to faff. I faff around enormously, wasting time, pratting around on the internet, looking at blogs, not doing anything very much, wasting away my time. And then, crucially, I get a tipping point. And this is so important. The tipping point is the thing that turns you from being someone who's just vaguely chatting about an adventure to someone who is committed, someone who's def definitely going to do it. A really simple way to do this is just to buy the single most important item you need for your trip. Often this is a plane ticket. Once you have a plane ticket, you've done two things. You've committed cash to it and you've booked your time slot. Once you've done that, you are so far along the line to making it happen. Choose your tipping point, do it. After that, you just have the final rush of Googling away, trying to work out what kit you need. I'm not gonna talk about that except to say, relax. Don't worry, half an hour on Google will teach you more than enough about gear. Go buy that on eBay. An hour or two on, e on the internet will teach you about visas, logistics, make sure you sort those out. Relax on the details, you'll be fine, just go. The crucial thing then, planning your next expedition. Narrow, ask yourself all these questions to narrow down precisely where you want to go. Put a date in the diary so it's committed. Start saving today and do this tipping point action that commits you to making the thing a reality. Go, dream, plan, explore, go have a massive adventure. Good luck.